Well, little girl, this one's been a long time coming, but, you know, I think it's finally time we looked at another Andy Sidaris movie. It's been way too long since I've seen one of these. These are great. The evil bong fake-out probably would have been funnier if you hadn't already read the title. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Hard Ticket to Hawaii. <sighs> Hello, brainless blood and guts. I am called Mindless TNA, and it's time we finally dive back into the oeuvre of Mr. Andy Sidaris. Hard Ticket to Hawaii is the second and by far the most popular movie in Andy Sidaris' infamous Lethal Ladies series. For those uninitiated, Andy Sidaris is a director known for a series of films in the late 80s and early 90s, known for their absurd violence and gratuitous nudity. So uh, the perfect filmmaker, really. This film stars Ron Moss, who uh, did a voice in Bolt? That's about it. More importantly, it introduces Playboy models Donna Spear and Cynthia Brimhall, who would be the stars for the rest of the series. The characters and events of Malibu Express are only mentioned once in passing, although the boat does show up. Technically, Malibu Express is the first movie in the series, it's even included in the box set, but this is the real start of the Lethal Ladies series. So let's go in for a lethal dose of Hard Ticket to Hawaii. You should get in, Rowdy. The water is great. But the dubbing isn't. Yeah, we'll try this. Ooh, minute 25. You gotta shave off about six seconds if you want to beat the lusting hour. Some island police pull up to a known marijuana plantation with the intent to slap them on the wrist and nothing else, stating they're actually an asset to the community. Instead, they find the plantation has been taken over and they get killed. Two tits and two dead bodies before the title even pops up. That's a good pace to set. Hey boss, where you want me to put this shipment of Donna Spear? But things kick off when a forklift driver accidentally pulls the warning label off a crate holding a giant deadly snake. Which I'm thinking was probably not good security if they were loose enough to get caught on a forklift. Drug enforcement agents can't afford to get soft. And you're watching an Andy Sidaris movie, so you can't afford to be soft. So this is Donna and Taryn, the lethal ladies, undercover as pilots, flying tourists and shipments around, including our friend the Snake. So this is a crime movie about a federal agent working against an island-based criminal organization getting trapped on a plane with a deadly snake. Y'all think Snakes on a Plane ripped off Hard Ticket to Hawaii? But does Snakes on a Plane have a theme this jazzy? It's a hard ticket to Hawaii. It's not paradise all the time. Also, I think there's another snake that they were supposed to be shipping, and the one they have is contaminated? That snake they have is dangerous. It's contaminated. Contaminated in what way? Did Dirty Dog cough on it to infect it with coronavirus? Why would you be shipping a contaminated snake anywhere? It's an Andy Sidaris movie. Don't try to understand it. Just let it happen. Meanwhile, the drug lords use a remote-controlled helicopter to land shady stuff on the island so they don't have to take it through customs. But the plan goes awry when they just happen to land it right next to the two undercover agents. They weren't even expecting it, they just got lucky. So they take the package and run, without arresting the two guys attacking them that they knocked out. And they decide to find out what's in it in the most logical way possible. 
Topless and in a jacuzzi. Frankly, not enough police work is done topless in a jacuzzi. The diamonds, my god! Next we meet Rowdy and Jade, two other lethal agents who have been assigned to this case. Jade, did you see these hands? These hands are lethal weapons. Oh really? Confucius say, man with deadly hands must be very careful while slapping on aftershave. God, what a bunch of dorks. Anyway, Taryn has a Malibu Express poster. Taryn, you have a Malibu Express poster hanging over your bed. The store threw it in for free. I thought you'd get a kick out of it. We don't hear much from Cody anymore since he left the agency to become an actor. But someone's come to get those diamonds, and in the ensuing chaos, the snake gets loose. Taryn breaks loose and then runs into some railing. W what did you not see it there? You live here! The thieves run off because of the snake, but Donna manages to get a round off in one of them. So naturally, they go out for drinks. Okay, it's so they can meet up with Edie, the head of Lethal? And also someone who owns a bar? and so that they can talk with Rowdy and Jade. This is the only government agency that does all of their work out of boats and tropical huts. Although, come to think of it, why don't more organizations operate out of boats and tropical huts? I, I think Lethal is onto something with this. Turns out the guy they shot is Seth Romero, a local crime lord, which could help them bring him in, but puts a target on Donna and Taryn. And Edie, speaking of toys, I can't wait to see yours. Ooh, someone's getting pegged. And we can't miss out on all this beautiful Sidaris dialogue. Hey, wait. You go down on her, you're gonna be kissing the back of my head because I'm already gonna be there. This movie bounces wildly between empowered female action heroes and the most sexist men ever written. Pointless nude scene, let's move on. Man, he must be smoking some heavy doobies. Yeah, man, I know when I'm high, all I want to do is impressive skateboard stunts that I couldn't do sober. That makes complete sense. But whoa, it's the bad guy with a blow-up doll. Oh, don't worry, it gets weirder. The blow-up doll is used to cover a gun, which doesn't even seem to work as Rowdy sees the gun before he uses it. Look out, he's got a gun! And then, uh... <laughs> yeah, if you've seen anything from this movie, you've probably seen this. But like... What even happens here? It's the most disorientingly edited abuse of physics I have ever seen. And also is rad as fuck. But if you want to talk about weird moments, we can't forget this. It's wonderful. <laughs> but we can't get too wrapped up in absurd violence. We gotta stop for some pointless nudity. Oh, and if you liked the cross-dressing in Malibu Express, we got more of that, too. Although this time he seems to be doing some undercover work. He informs the bad guys that Edie is headed to the hospital to pick up Rowdy and Jade, and they intercept and kidnap her. Meanwhile, Donna and Taryn are spying on Seth's house and his frisbee-obsessed guard. Trust me, that will be important later. And they see Edie, so now the hunt's on. After a scene with some sumo wrestlers. And some more waffle about the snake. And whatever this is. Now it looked to me like a double post pattern with a pick on the outside linebacker, a flare across the middle with your split end, and a play action that gave you time to throw that ball 60 yards in the air. Now with time running out, no more timeouts, and all that pressure, what was it that you told those guys in that huddle? How did you call the play? Well, Jimmy John, all I said was, niggas go deep, and white guys keep them out if you can on two. Okay, but now the hunt's on. You're Charlie Chan, right? Si, senorita. Uh, you do know Charlie Chan is a Chinese stereotype, not a Mexican one, right? Anyways, buff woman. I, I don't know who this is or why she's here, but I don't care. Marry me. But all good things must come to an end as we return to the plot. 
That guard's name is Shades. We got a file on him. I'm sorry, Shades is his given name? Do you think he wears shades because that's his name? I don't want to control your life. All I want to do is suck the polish right off your toes. I'm gonna let that one go. So they've got Edie tied up with the buff lady as some form of torture? Uh, I also have information on those diamonds. Yeah, uh, looks like you guys are just gonna have to torture me. And here's the payoff to that frisbee thing. This is for the Molokai cops. Gotta love it. Anyways, these super spies infiltrate a base of operations with a fucking bazooka. Uh, these guys still have Edie tied up, right? Like, they could kill her at any moment? Maybe this should be a stealth mission until you're sure she's safe? They do manage to save Edie and blow up a helicopter. So the day is saved. Who got that bastard Seth? Well, shit. So Seth shows up for one last kill. Oh hey, I remember this scene from Halloween. And she harpoons him, which leads to... another scene from Halloween. And so the day is saved. Wait, isn't there still a snake on the loose? Damn, I look fake as shit. And then Rowdy bursts through the wall on a motorcycle and blows up the snake with a bazooka. Because fuck you. And then the movie abruptly reintroduces a character we've seen exactly once before flying an RC helicopter just so they can shoot someone out of a building. Oh, and Taryn keeps the diamonds, I guess. The end. So that's Hard Ticket to Hawaii, and I gotta say, all the gratuitous nudity in this movie really takes away from what's important in this film. The gratuitous violence. This movie is as subtle as a fucking bazooka, and I love it. And clearly I'm not alone, as it's gone down as one of the all-time great bad movies. Although, I don't know if that's totally fair. They knew what they were doing. This isn't The Room or Samurai Cop. Frankly, it's just beautiful to see a movie that completely gives the finger to any semblance of good taste, and I highly recommend it. Well, until we meet again, Andy. Uh, if you like this one, don't forget to check out my review of Malibu Express, the first movie in the Lethal Lady series. And, uh, man, I'm just really glad I got this one out. Luckily, there aren't any other franchises I'm neglecting. <laughs> See you guys around! I love it when you talk dirty. Uh, just gonna take a hit off the old bong and... Wait a minute. Bong? Hmm. Weed. Grass. Cutting the grass. Cutting things with a machete. Cheech Marin was in machete. Cheech of Cheech and Chong. Tommy Chong was in... Zootopia. Which is a really good movie, don't you think? Dude, are you gonna review Evil Bong 4 or not? Fuck!